This is the Grind It Podcast. We know just like grinding a handrail or across the coping can be challenging at times, so can life be. We share God's word and personal stories to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. It's time to grind. So here's the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. Today we're going <laughs> to start now. That's a great intro. Yes. Thank you. Today we're going to pick up with Mark chapter 15, but before we get into all that, I'm going to give you an opportunity to embarrass yourself, and because as you can see it, we're at the round table, and we have a lot of uh, young people with us today, so uh, why don't we start with my wife, why don't you start, and we'll go around the table and we'll say who's here. Oh, my name is Mary. Roll call. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> formerly Gamboa. Now Tucker. MaryGambleMusic.com. There you go. Check out right. our album. All right. And to my right, um, I'm Hope. Yeah. Hope, right. where are you from? California. Woo woo! In the house. Just moved to Tennessee. How long? Uh, almost two years. Almost. Oh, you've been here two years. Mm-hmm. Three. Yep. They just started coming to Authentic Church. 322 Lindsay Street, now <laughs> cold at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We'd love to well, have you. Come on, join us. Yes, come so on. We're on leaps and bounds. It's about to go to two services. Here we are. That's awesome. Ooh. Yeah. All right. And to my left is Dylan Murphy. The the Dylan Murphy. Quintessential. <laughs> don't don't hype me up like that. <laughs> Worship leader can shred on a, an electric guitar. What else? Shred this morning for the first time in like probably a month and a half. Yeah. Actually played my electric. Nice. <sighs> Felt so weird. You're playing with the bluegrass band too, right? Yes, sir. Jaybirds. Jaybirds Facebook. Jaybirds. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, look at, go look at us. We haven't gotten a gig yet, but we're trying. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. I'll get All there. Right. All right. All right. And I'm you are? Say it again. I'm Jessica. Jessica. From? Marable. 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 You better pronounce Marble. it M-R. Marable. Right. And she's, uh, well, all of these are you, except for Dylan. He's out there. At, at all Dylan <laughs> Church. He, he plays with us at all Church sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. And I'm, I'm Randall, Randy. Uh, y'all know me for three years now. So you are? Olivia. 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 Other known as? Liv. Liv. From California. Oh, those California people. <laughs> we love them. We love our California people, especially at Authentic Church, 322 Lindsay Street. Okay. Three fourths of the church is from California. I know. I'm not sure you're about to plug the address the second time. <laughs> 322. <laughs> We're actually praying for 322 souls to be saved and spirit filled. <laughs> Around the church. Around, Around the, church. the church. Yes. Lord, give us the, the strategies to reach them. That's right. And last but not least, I'm Shelby. Shelby. Shelby's been doing the podcast with us uh, for a while now. All right. So um, thank you all for joining us today. All right. Thank You're you for having us. You're so brave. Just speak loudly so the mic can pick you up. Uh, and try not to hit the table. Because the mic will pick you up. Oh. Um, <laughs> so we're we're about we got one more chapter to do in Mark and we we're, we're thinking about doing Revelation now. I'm not 100 percent sure what we're wow, doing. That's we're awesome. about with Revelation. Zero to a hundred. Yeah, go. for real. Um, and so we're we're to the point now where um, Jesus has done his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He's had uh, the last Passover meal with his disciples. They sung the hymn. Judas has gone and done his thing. Peter's denied him three times. Uh, and we left Jesus uh, with his disciples at the Garden of Gethsemane where uh, he was arrested and brought before the council. And that's where um, Mark 15 picks up is the trial. You know, we're getting pretty uh, close to, as Mary likes to say, Resurrection Day. She don't like to call it Easter. Um, but uh, the Resurrection Day. Um, and that's the it's really timing out pretty good the way we're, we're covering uh, this chapter, this, this book of Mark and coming up on these last few chapters. Uh, looking at the death and burial and the resurrection of Jesus because that's, that's why we're all here for, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's, that, this is our hope. That's good. Yep. That's our hope. So Shelby, if you will, what did I tell you? The first five verses? 
Yeah. Read verse one through five. Wait, do you want us to pray first? I forgot that last time, didn't I? <laughs> Lord, forgive me! I was waiting to make eye contact. Nobody oh, who needs prayer? Oh, anyway. that hurts! <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for That's all right. Yeah. Go for it, Mama. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in this place. And we ask you for wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding, discernment. Um, may we rightly divide your word of truth. You said we are workmen not ashamed if we rightly divide it. So help us um, to ingest this, to chew on it, to be able to meditate on your word and get rhema out of it. Yeah. Not just logos, mm -hmm. not just head knowledge, Lord, but but spirit knowledge that that feeds oh, us, yeah. that empowers us. We ask for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Because it'd be a bad habit. Go ahead, Chad. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plan. So they bound Jesus, led him away. Wait a minute. Sorry, right say. So all these people who are supposed to know the Bible, Old Testament, right? They're supposed to be pointing to the Messiah, should be excited about the Messiah. Here is the Messiah. Been in their midst for three, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. They've tried to stone him multiple times. They tried to push him off a cliff. Ever since he started working miracles, they have been plotting on how to kill him. The person they've been looking for for hundreds of years that the prophets have been prophesying about. And here's their whole little group. They've been meeting all night long, secretly, which is why I call this silent but deadly. Because mm -hmm. they're, they're keeping silence as far as the crowd. And, you know, they're keeping all these things behind closed doors. And they're fixing to, uh, they're, they're getting their way because they've got how Satan works from the inside out, right? He likes to get on the inside and bust up and split, divide. And that's exactly what he's done with Jesus and his disciples. Yeah. So, all right, go ahead. That's good. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, are you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amused. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. But here, Jesus is bound by these guys. I mean, it, it, he was also bound in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? By mm -hmm. the little militia. He was bound and, and led away to, to this moment here. And it's kind of comical because, as you brought out in the last podcast, when, when um, is it John's Gospel or Luke's Gospel, where... They come to arrest Jesus, and they said, Jesus says, who are you looking for? And he said, they say, Jesus of Nazareth. And what happens? They all fall out. Because he says, I am he. Yeah. Right. Woo. I am he. And they all just, from, the, from this power. So this is kind of comical that they, they kind of bound him up as if it, you know, if, it, if it could hold him. But what makes it special is, is what John says in 1 John 10, 17 and 18. Um, maybe it's John 10, 17. In 18, that's what Jesus says. I don't know why I put 1 John in there. John 10, 17 through 18. The Father loves me because I sacrificed my life so I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. Mm. I sacrifice it voluntarily. For I have the authority to lay it down when I want mm. and to also take it up again. That's good. For this is Come what on. my Father has yeah. commanded. That's good. But I, I want to point out there that these, these people didn't kill Jesus. He voluntarily laid down his life. Why? For us. For us. For our son. And we're going to dig into that real deep here in a few minutes. Good. All right. Um, so these guys, are they're hurling accusations against Jesus. It's kind of like, what's the old saying? Taking the poop and throwing it up against the wall to see if it sticks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Put it in a nice way. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that before. I'll be honest with well, you. Well, it, it usually said a different way. I'm just trying to keep it clean. I feel, yeah. You know, PG. But, yeah, PG. But that's what they're doing. They're hurling these Christ. accusations against Jesus. And, and, and this, too, it's not comical, but it is comical. Because here, here's a man of perfection who has never sinned not one time. Because he couldn't, or he couldn't be our pastor of the land, First Corinthians um, 5, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. 
that he's our, 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 our Passover lamb. He, and the Passover lamb has to be perfect, right? Spotless. Without blemish. That's Jesus. And so they're hurling all these accusations against him, trying, you know, trying to um, trump up these charges so that they could get him killed and get him out of here. So Pilate's saying, don't you hear all these accusations they're making against you? Well, what does Jesus say? No. No, yeah, he just, he, he just keeps his mouth shut because he knows he's innocent. He, Jesus doesn't feel the need to defend himself because he knows why he's there. I just read it, a part of it. He's there to die for the sins of man. All right, <clears throat> especially being teenagers, when, when somebody's accusing you of something, how do you feel and what do you do? How do you respond? Do you keep your mouth shut or what do you do? Just keep your mouth shut. Like, you do keep your mouth shut. Yeah, like, you it do. doesn't bother me. Anything, yeah? Because I know it's not true. Really? Other people, like my close friends know it's not true. So it's like, why give them the satisfaction of... You're not as combative. There's, yeah. There's some wisdom there. There's a lot of wisdom there. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys have had other peers, people that you know, yeah. that probably did not do that, right? I was going to say, I think it also kind of depends on how well you know the person that's accusing you of this thing. Like, if they're closer to you, then you're going to be like, hey, like, what are you talking about? But if it's like someone that you don't even know and that they're just saying something random, it's not as um, close to home as it would be as if it's someone that you know at least yeah. a little bit more than that. Yeah. Like, why give them the time of day? Exactly. They're not even... Okay. Yeah, some yeah. Joe Schmo off the street walks up and accuses <laughs> you to say, whatever, yeah. you know. But if it's your sibling, hey, no, that is not how yeah. that went down, yeah. right? You might explain yourself. If it's the principal of your school, <laughs> definitely my dog's still not. Dog's still, dog, dog, still me. You'd have to use some wisdom. Like, do I defend myself? Do I state these are the facts? 90% of the well, time. Well, do I just keep my mouth shut? I know in the past, I, I don't keep my mouth shut, unfortunately. And I plead my case. I'm not like that at all. I didn't do that. This is guilty. This is what, yeah. <laughs> I like to defend myself. But uh, maybe I should learn from Jesus' devil. Anything else? I have a question. This talks about the Sanhedrin. What is the Sanhedrin? A lot of rich people. What? Just rich people? So I'll be honest. I thought, I thought that that was... A certain, like I thought that was a certain branch of Pharisee. But I it was made up of Pharisee. Really? Okay. And okay. Well, can I can I read they're my footnote? Like the, <laughs> you read your, I, I like to read the footnotes. This like is why I like the study Bible, right? They like the judicial branch. Of it. Okay. 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 Yeah. So back in um, chapter fourteen, verse fifty-five, my footnote says the Sanhedrin is the high court of the Jews. In New Testament times, it was made up of three kinds of members: chief priests. Elders and teachers of the law. So its total membership number 71, including the high priest, mm -hmm. who was the pres presiding officer. Under Roman jurisdiction, the Sanhedrin was given a great deal of authority, but it could not impose capital punishment. What's capital punishment? Death. Death sentence. Right. So they couldn't give a death mm -hmm. sentence. Okay. Um, but they could do other kinds of punishments, right? We talked uh, a podcast or two about the right, the flogging. 39, 39, not 39 times, yeah. you know, you could be flogged in public. Um, there were other things that they could do, and they had the authority. But So this is kind of like court. Okay, let's put it back in a school setting. This would be your, um, you know, authority figures, your, the faculty, the teachers, as well as maybe the janitorial staff, and the, the principals, and, you know, those kind of folks. That was your Sanhedrin that would decide what's going on, what's your punishment, what's, you know. Yeah, and you see this in Acts chapter 4 when Peter and John are first, the one persecution first starts. Remember, they're brought before the Sanhedrin mm -hmm. because they were speaking and teaching in the name of Jesus and they were told not to do this again. And then what happens? They go right back out and they begin to preach and teach in the name of Jesus again. They're brought right back and this time they're flawed and said don't do this again they go right back out and they do it again mm -hmm. um, but that's who they're brought before was the Sanhedrin so this was uh, if I'm not mistaken Pharisees and Sadducees right? right 
Um, so, so in the difference, right, Paul stirs up a little uh, debate between them. He's like, I'm on trial because of the resurrection! Yes. And these guys who believe in the resurrection start fighting with the guys who don't believe in the resurrection. You know, you know they get all crazy with each other. <laughs> they get all crazy with each other, but that was, that was part of the Sanhedrin, so... Yeah, the same. Okay. The Sanhedrin. You had to have a lot of money, and you had a lot of power. Mm. If you remember the Sanhedrin. So, you, needless to say, up. Jesus is being brought b- before this whole Sanhedrin. So, there's 71 sets of eyes looking at him. We met secretly through the night. Right, but they're they're looking at him, going, "Are you? Are you not? Who are you? You know, what do we do with you?" Well, think of their egos right now. Mm-hmm. Dude, they, they, they finally got it. They're all jealous, number one. Yeah. They're all jealous of Jesus and the miracles that he's done, right? But they've been trying for three, three and a half years. Jesus has been, like, they would think something in their mind. Remember the Pharisees? The mm-hmm. Pharisees' house, Simon the Pharisees. And Jesus would call him out, out loud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do know who this woman is, and she's preparing me for my burial. You, on the other hand, you didn't even wash my feet when mm-hmm. I came in your house. Yeah, that's... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so they're, they're jealous. And these guys would have huge egos. And so they've got this, they think a quack, you know, some crazy nut that's been running around three, three and a half years saying that he's the Messiah. There's no way he's the Messiah because, first of all, your mama's an adulterer, is what they're thinking, because she's pregnant and wasn't even married. So there's no way you're from Nazareth. No, nothing, nothing good comes from Nazareth. You're just an ordinary dude. You're not sitting on the throne of David. You're not dressed in royal garbs. You, you just don't fit the description. Therefore, we don't believe you, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, they're jealous. And, and so now, think of their egos, and, and here they are. They have Jesus before them. They can't kill him, but they can persuade somebody that could kill him, which is what's happening here. Mm-hmm. So apparently, the making their plans it consisted of they wanted to accuse Jesus before the civil authority, before the Roman authority for treason, because what's, what's the punishment for treason? Death. Yeah, death. I mean, if somebody told American secrets to China or elsewhere in the world, you know what I'm saying? They would be called. Uh, they would. It would be said that they had committed treason, mm-hmm. and usually the punishment for that is death, right? So they they were hoping to get him on treason so they could get him killed, and they wouldn't have to take the blame for. Yeah, and, and from verse two, in. from verse two, you know one of the accusations that they've made against him because Pilate said, are you the king of the Jews? So obviously they're saying, hey, he said he's the king of the Jews. We don't believe he's the king of the Jews. He said he's the king of the Jews, which is, would get him for mm-hmm. treason because it, that's smoking up against Caesar. You can't do that. Because there can't be another king exactly. in this kingdom. Mm-hmm. Right? Do me a favor, go and check out some awesome worship music that's written and sung by my beautiful wife, Mary Tucker, and you can check that out at marygamboamusic.com. Mary is the worship leader at Authentic Church at 322 Lindsay Street in Alcoa, Tennessee. Now you can check us out and come worship with us on Sundays at 10 a.m. and we'd love to have you there. Also, you can download Mary's songs wherever you stream your music. If you would like to book Mary for your next event, contact her through the website at marygamboamusic.com or you can text her at area code 865-418-2824. We look forward to worshiping with you soon. Now, back to the podcast. He's, he, he's trying to get this army going so he can revolt against you guys. So take him out. Kill him. All right, Shelby. Verses 6 through 15. Now there was custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The so this guy's a, a, a murderer. He's, he's killed people. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to, to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate. Knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. Or the new leader had jealousy, right? Yeah. There. Yeah, the New Living Translation says, for he realized by now that the leading priests had arrested Jesus out of envy. Out of envy. Jealousy. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I'll be honest with you. I've read that so many times, but I've never connected it like that. I never knew that it was out of envy. 
that the chief priests were like, oh, okay, well, this Jesus guy is dangerous, not only because he's spewing out rhetoric that doesn't look like what Isaiah prophesied. Like, there, if I can, can, yeah, I, can yeah. I do this real quick? So, something I've been reading about is Isaiah 61, which I'm actually a little bit... There it is. So, Jesus appears before these saints, like not these officials per se, but he appears before the public and he's rejected because he reads this verse in Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is on me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and freedom to the prisoners. And it goes on. Um, it's essentially Isaiah's prediction of what's to come. And it's predicting Jesus. And then he goes in front of these people. I, I believe it's, I, I want to say it's in Luke. I'm yeah, he reads the scroll. Yes. Yeah. And he's in the synagogue. And he's in the, yeah, that's it. Yeah. He's in the synagogue yeah. and, he's, and he's reading all of this. And they're like, oh, you're the fulfillment of scripture? Yeah, he told Oh, him. are you sure about that? Yeah, and then that's him. where he was rejected. Started. And that makes a lot more, like that kind of brings it full circle for me because it's like, oh, okay, they're jealous of him not only because he's doing all these things, but because he's a breathing fulfillment of Scripture. And they're like, oh, well, are you? You know, well, if you are, then we want to be the people that say we got the best of you, yeah. which is insane. I don't know. Sorry. Little thing that I've just never realized about this passage. That's no, because it, they're... Uh, I, I, I can't remember if it's in Mark 15, if it's in this, or if we've already read it. But when they're 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 punching him and smacking, ripping his beard off, and all this horrible stuff, and and the guy smokes him, and he says, "Now prophesy, who who just hit you?" You know, was that last time? In the last time, I remember we were talking about that, and it was like Jesus knew exactly who was hitting him. He could, you know, he could have called him out. He could have killed the guy for it if he wanted to. But the, huh? His next section. Okay. Um, but think about it. When Jesus started, when he read that scroll, and he started healing, one of the one of the first healings he did was in the synagogue when he healed the man's withered hand. And the Pharisees, you know, they were constantly having uh, issues with Jesus because well, he's healing on the Sabbath. They didn't care about the the person who was sick and, and needed healing. They were just upset because he was healing on the Sabbath or he's breaking the law. And then, but anyway, so. The Pharisees, if you think about it, they're, they're used to being out of the public, right? And they're saying these fancy prayers, and they're used to getting all this attention. Well, now the attention's being focused on Jesus because the crowds are following him everywhere he goes. And so their egos, man, their egos are just out the roof, and that, they're, they're full of envy. They're full of jealousy. Mm. We got to get rid of this guy. But why? Because our power. Our, uh, our wit not our witness, but our power, our control. Everybody's getting their eyes off of us and turning on this this dude who's a no man. He doesn't even have a house. Mm -hmm. He's walking around the streets and doesn't even have a place to lay his head. Mm -hmm. Look at us. You know we're rich and powerful, but but the attention is going to this man. We've got to get rid of this guy. So a lot of ego check here. All right, so go ahead. Where were we, where were we at? Okay, All right. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas and said, What shall I do then with the one you call the king of, Jew king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they, sh they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. There you go. The pass upon the crowd. All right, so something that I, I'm speaking of reading the Bible and, and, and still learning things. I'm 51 years old. I've been studying the Bible or reading it at least since I was in the second or third grade. So I've been re at least reading it for a long time. And so here's, you got Bar uh, Barabbas, right? Yeah. And you, yeah. So you, can, you can chime in on this. Yeah. So Barabbas, if you break this down, I didn't, I didn't realize this until... When I was studying for this podcast, literally, in Matthew, his name is Jesus Barabbas. And when you break down Barabbas, Bar, B-A-R, Bar, Abbas, 
Bar means son of, and Abba means daddy, daddy father. So Barabbas' name is Jesus. Jesus, son of father. father. I know. I always what? Thought, I know. I always <laughs> could. Wait. I had this revelation. A word. Are you serious? Ago. And I was like, wait, Barabbas, that right? Awesome? Okay, so think about so, oh, wow. other okay. other names in scripture, like Simon Bar Jonah, right? Okay. Yeah. Simon, son of son Jonah. Son of Jonah. Yeah. Right? Ah. Bar is so it's Aramaic, I think. Um, bar meaning son of, and then Abbas, right? I know. So his crazy. wait, I'm sorry. His first name was the Jesus. Jesus yes, Bar that, yeah. that uh, it's in Matthew. So look, everything that God does, Satan counterfeits, said. right? Everything God does, Satan tries to counterfeit. And so you look at this man who is is in prison because he actually was part of an insurrection. And my Bible says yeah. that he was probably part of the zealots. You know, who were trying to stir up an actual revolution against the Romans, right? He's been involved in murder, and so. and he's been taken into custody. Do you want us? Do you want me to release Jesus Bar Abba, right? The real one, Jesus of Nazareth, who really is the Son of the Father, or do you want me to release Jesus Barabbas, who's the counterfeit? And what does the crowd cry out for? Is that not cool? The counterfeit. I've, I've never realized that until I was studying for this podcast. So I, 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 I want to talk about that just some more. Um, but uh, this, um, there's a guy by the name of Tim Keller. He, he's passed away from cancer now, but, but he wrote in a book. Uh, it says, Tim Keller points out that we have two Jesuses in our story, both son of the father, and yet they could not be more different. One rules by taking the lives of others, and the other rules by giving his own life. One wants to overthrow the king, and the other is the rightful king of the people. One is guilty and will be set free, and the other is an innocent man who is about to be killed. The real son of the father, who is innocent, will go to his death. And he said they freed the wrong son. That's insane. That is insane. I'm I'm just now reading it, so it's a footnote, and I'm and I I got to be honest, I didn't know that this Bible had that, so now I've got an entire different resource, which is awesome. <laughs> which is awesome. Praise the Lord for footnotes. <laughs> this is this is phenomenal. So it it does say other messages free Jesus Barabbas. Also in verse seventeen, it says the exact same one says, "Who is it you want for me to release to you, Bar Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ?" Like they made the distinction. That's nuts! I didn't know that. So That's so cool. Here, here's what I want to talk about for a few minutes. And it's this. Every one of us is Barabbas. Every one of us is Barabbas. And the reason why I say that is because he, he may be guilty of murder. And I'm assuming none of y'all killed him. Right? <laughs> you know, Maybe one or two at a time or two. Close. I came close. There was a <laughs> but 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 it's because of our sin. Like the, the song I brought up last time by Ray Bolt, the hammer in our in, in our hand. It's our sin is the reason why Jesus had to go through this. Every one of our sins, no matter what we fill in the blank with, it just sin in general. Romans three twenty three says we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us, every person that's ever walked the face of the earth. Beside Jesus, right? Um, so, in a way, we're, you know, we're like Barabbas. Um, Jesus took our place on the cross. It should have been us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, I want to give you some verses, and we can talk about these verses. Hebrews two nine and ten says, "What we do see is Jesus, who for a little while was given a position a little lower than the angels, and because he suffered death for us." He is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everybody. God for whom, uh, God for whom and through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, a perfect leader fit to bring them into their salvation. 
Uh, Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 21 says this. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Mm. Compels us, some verse says. Yeah. But it's Christ's love that controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, all. Who's included even in all? Judas. Even Judas. Everybody? Everybody. everybody. Even, <laughs> I mean, what did he do to, when, when Judas brought that militia into the garden? And there was a signal that was supposed to be given to that militia for the one to arrest. Because they didn't know who Jesus was. And so here they show up with their lanterns and their clubs and their swords. And they're, you know, they, they're here to, you know, for a fight or something. And Judas says, the one I go up and kiss, that's the one you want to arrest. That would be Jesus. And J Judas goes up and he kisses Jesus. Do you, do you know what Jesus said to Judas? I can't believe you're doing this, man. What are you doing? No, it's not. That's, you sinner. No, that's what he thought. No, that's not what he said. What did he say? When, when, when he arrested, uh, when Judas kissed him and he was going to arrest him. Friend. Friend. He still calls you his friend. That's what he does for him. That has to hit hard, though. Like, yeah. you just did that, and now he still calls you. Like, that has to like, hurt, like, at least a little. Yeah, it, it, it did hurt. Some sort it of hurt him so bad that he went home himself. Yeah. He couldn't take it. And, and this is what I talked about last podcast. I think it's last podcast. But if, if he would have just hung on for a few days, he would have saw that this was working out for everybody's good. Because he was amongst the 12 disciples Every time that Jesus said, I'm going to be betrayed, I'm going to die on the cross, I'm going to be put in a tomb for three days, but I'm going to come back out alive. It's going to be okay. And he couldn't hold on. He, the, I don't know if it was the guilt or what, but he, he took the 30 pieces of silver back to the people, threw it at them, and took off and hung himself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, either way, Christ's love controls us, Paul says. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that he had... All, he, we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone. Talking about Jesus. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So in other words, when we come to Christ and we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, like Paul says in Romans 6, that old man is crucified, he's buried. Or in Galatians 2.20, mm -hmm. I'm crucified with Christ. So I no longer live, live but, but I, Christ lives in me. Yeah. The life I now live and live by faith in the Son of Man who gave himself for me. Yes. Loved me and gave himself. So our old man has passed away, right? We're on the six, and we come up out of water, the baptism, and we're filled with the Spirit, and we're walking according to the Spirit, right? Um, so, uh, I forgot my train of thought there. <laughs> I'll get back on this. <laughs> he died for, uh, for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. It, that, that's what I was going to say. So we're not, our old man has passed away. We're not supposed to live for our own selfish desires we're supposed to be living to do God's will right mm -hmm. living for Jesus instead they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view mm -hmm. at one time we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view how differently we know him now this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person come on the old life is gone a new life has <laughs> begun and all this new is a creation. gift from God so it goes back. Whatever you've done, even if you have murdered somebody, which you have not, but fill in the blank. The worst of sin that you could imagine, when you come to Christ, the Bible says that when, the, when you're washing the blood of Jesus, your sins are not remembered against you anymore. Hallelujah. It's not like God has amnesia and forgets. He just doesn't. <laughs> He's looking at us through a filter now, and that filter is the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're forgiven. Right. right. So I am Barabbas. I am Judas. I, yeah, yes. Right. Shelby had something. Go ahead. She had something to contribute. Uh, I just saw the verse in Titus chapter 3. Ooh. Um, and it says, At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of the righteous righteous things we have, have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, and he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. 
Preach it, sister. Come on. That's good. That's good. good. That is good. Grace, I heard it says, God's redemption at Christ's expense. It, it doesn't matter. I can go out and baptize a million people tomorrow. That's not going to hurt me a place in heaven. It, it doesn't matter. Why? You can play every instrument that's made known to man and have the greatest voice of an angel. I'm going to get you into heaven. You can be on the stage every Sunday, do whatever. Come to youth group every Wednesday night, you know, whatever. It's all what Christ meant for us. Mm -hmm. This moment that we're talking about right here at the end of Mark, that His grace, His mercy, His compassion for us, Him, it, it's, every, it's about everything that He did, willingly laying down His life so that we can have life. Mm -hmm. And so we all shall crucify him. They do. They do. Wait, do it with me. That. Crucify oh, him. <laughs> no, you, that, that you scared you. the crap. Isn't it crazy oh, though? <laughs> but, but that was me. Right? Yeah. That was me not knowing, standing in the crowd, going, crucify him. People right? do it every day. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't intentionally do that now, knowing what I know. But, but that's what was going on at the time. All the, the regular people, and some of the people, this, this is crazy, some of the ones that were celebrating his entry into Jerusalem the week before are now the ones shouting, crucify him! Can you imagine? Yeah. Like, a, a, a minute ago, they were like, Hosanna! Blessed is the king! Right? And now they're, down with the king, <laughs> crucify him! Yeah, they literally just a few days before, it, it, you know, I'm assuming some of the same some of the same crowd had the palm branches and was Hosanna, mm -hmm. some of yeah. yeah, and now they're they've been persuaded to give up this murder, and there's no way this guy can be. They've seen miracle after miracle after miracle for three to three and a half years. They've seen dead people come back to life, which is crazy. They've seen blind eyes healed, open. They they see they hear mute people speaking now. Mm -hmm. The deaf can hear. Withered hands, withered growing hands out. growing back. People who are paralytics getting up and walking. Demons being cast out. Yeah. So how in the world could they, on one hand, cry out, "This is the one. This is the Messiah. We're putting our clothes down so the donkey can walk on our clothes." To crucify him, crucify him. What's the difference? Propaganda. Propaganda. <laughs> persuasion. It, it is propaganda. They were, they were persuaded, the crowd was persuaded to uh, by these religious leaders. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening to the Grounded Podcast. If we could pray for you or encourage you in any way, please email us at thegroundedpodcast at gmail.com or you can text us at 865-418-2824. If you're watching on YouTube, please click like and subscribe and you'll be notified about new episodes. If you're listening on an app, leave us a five-star review, but most importantly, share the Grounded Podcast with a friend. God bless you and remember, keep grinding.